Hello, doctor. How are you doing? I'm well, Mr. Neta. How are you today? No, I'm not too bad. Um, aside of these technical difficulties, um, I'm yeah. fantastic. I'm fantastic. Um, apologies awesome. to our audience. I think we've had a bit of a problem there. We had a technical glitch. Um, we had to go out and then come back in again. But um, I hope that that didn't disturb your program um, a lot because it was only about five minutes. We're back in now uh, speaking to Dr. Wilbert Mutoko. Sir, I'd like to um, I'd like to appreciate you for coming through and thank you so much for answering the call. All I need today is to really, really learn from you. I'm learning and I'm sure that a lot of people are going to learn as well because the topic that we're going to be discussing today is very deep and it's something that a lot of people do not really understand, including myself. And um, I'd like us to go deeper into it so that we would understand what exactly it means. Uh, before I introduce the topic, I'd like you, say to introduce yourself. I know you're Dr. Wilbert Mutoko, um, but I know a bit, but a lot of people might not know you. So please go ahead and introduce yourself, sir. <laughs> thank you so much, Mr. Neta. Highly appreciated, and thank you for having me. And I would like to welcome our audience. Thank you for coming through. We have an exciting topic. We are talking about emotional intelligence. Uh, Wilbert is my name. I'm a village boy. Something very common between the two of us, Mr. Neta and I, are village boys. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we, we are. We, we are very proud. <laughs> we, we walked several kilometers going to school. I, I was reading your, your, your history, Mr. Neta, and oh, yeah? it excited me. I said, ah, this man, <laughs> you went through what I went through. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. I like that. It's relatable. Yeah, yeah, relatable. yeah very much relatable. So yes, I love empowering people. That that's what excites me. That's what I live to do. I'm an author. I'm a speaker. I'm an executive coach, and of course, I'm a strategist. I help entrepreneurs to do the best that they can with the potentials that they have. Yeah, and we are here. Um, one of the things that I've done is that I've written four self-help books, and I'm currently writing another one, which should be out by mid June, and it's called Emotional Intelligence and team alignment. So it is very much aligned to what we are talking about today. Emotional intelligence will be my fifth book. Um, the first three that I wrote were on finance. One is on relationships. And then this fifth one will be on emotional intelligence. Fantastic. That's, uh, that's packed. That's packed that. I, I, wish, I wish I could be half as, uh, as you. <laughs> I'm, no, not even, you, I'm you, not even a quarter. <laughs> you are very advanced. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate that. Yes. I appreciate that. So yeah. I've been I've been reading a lot about you, sir. And yes. um, there's a lot of interesting things that you're doing. And um, yes. one of the things that I'd like to know more about and why your inclination towards, um, you know, public speaking and why your inclination towards um, knowledge, team building and stuff like that. There's, there's, there's quite a lot. There's quite a lot that is going on um, in the world at the moment, and there is right. a lot of uptake of information. Now, when you're talking of uptake of information, you're talking of um, things like we've got social media platforms, with the likes of Facebook and so on and so forth. All these people are gathering a lot of information at an uh, unprecedented uh, pace. Now, why is it that you decided to sort of um, get into an area which you are? which is mostly public speaking, and sort of enriching people with information. What can you say about the choice that you've made to go in that area, basically? Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Neta, for asking that. So for me, uh, sharing information has always been my passion. And mm -hmm. speaking and empowering people comes naturally and I love it. That's what I would want to do for the rest of my life. Even when I'm no longer in active work, I still want yeah. to be able to speak to people, encourage people, inspire people, empower people, train people, mentor people, uh, because I believe that's the purpose that I was born for. That's, uh, that's something that I relate to as well, because um, I feel yeah. like, there is, there is a lot of us doing almost something similar. 
but information that is being churned out coming back to what I've asked, I've, I've just asked you, is it something that's enriching? Mm -hmm. Is this something that is empowering? Is this information really something that we need? Uh, you know, we need to be in a position where we we have to be able to differentiate information. Is this information helpful right. or is it not? You know, just drawing that line Perfect. is very, very difficult for a lot of people now. Now we're talking of millennials. Mm. We've got mm. a lot of all these other, you know, social media platforms exchanging all the information. But what makes you think um, that it is, um, I mean, what, what, what makes you uh, think would be the best option for the young millennials to be able to pick the information? What's, what's in, fact, in fact, to rephrase my question properly, because this is a very difficult one. What I've realized is young millennials are finding it mm. very difficult to pick the right information that they can use to enrich themselves. The information that they are picking now, it can be poisonous, it can be so dangerous, which is detrimental to life. Coming back to maybe a topic that we'll discuss at some point in the future, which is to do with millennial suicide because of social um, interactions on various social media platforms. Now, how do people choose the right information? I think this is how I wanted to rephrase it. How do people choose the best information that will be helpful for them? How do you advise people? It's not choose? an easy one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what, what I will say to people is, it depends on what you are trying to achieve. If you want to be average, majority of people on earth are either average or below average. If you right. want to become great and you want to make sure by the time you leave this world, you will have left a mark, then you need to go for information that only 5 to 10% of the world's population look for. But if you like a lot of fun, a lot of, you know, just spending time without really taking time seriously, then you're going to be average or below average. But otherwise, if you really want your life to count, such that even when you are gone, generations to come will still be talking mm. about you because of the impact you will have made, then you need to seek uh, information that is, um, that is useful, that can change your life and that can change other people's lives as well. That brings me down to the topic for today. That right. brings me down to the subject of emotional intelligence. Right. And um, I just wanted to, I just wanted you to sort of explain that before we get into the topic. Because right. if you look at, um, if you look at it, there is, there is need mm -hmm. for emotional intelligence mm -hmm. for people to be able to understand the kind of information that they choose to keep and that they right. choose to start, right? Right. So mm -hmm. before we even dig deeper into the subject matter, can you please maybe describe for those people that don't understand what emotional intelligence is um, to maybe get a little bit of a glimpse of what we're going to be discussing about today? Thank you, Mr. Neta. I will, I will give you a story there. Great. Right. Sorry, true, true, life, true life story. Mm -hmm. One great man was traveling and he happened to be at a very big airport. While he was at the airport, unknown to him, somebody really hated him with a passion. Wow. So this man who hated the great man with a passion just got face to face with this great man and spat on his face. Wow. Now, my question to the audience is, if you were him, what were you going to do? Please kindly type in the comment section on Facebook. Let's know what you would do. Just be honest with yourself. Just be sincere with yourself. You are at an airport or you are in a public place where you expect to be honored, you expect to be respected, and somebody spits on your face. What will happen? <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. <laughs> I need to hear I, what I the really... people say. I really need to hear the responses, you know, from uh, <laughs> from our audiences. Yeah. Um, I think our our video is stuck, but we can still, you know, our audio is okay. 
Okay. So maybe it'll pick up, but I can hear you properly. You can hear me properly. So we can just continue. That's fine. Um, okay. I, I would love to hear um, what the audience would say to that. But mm -hmm. um, from my own perspective, mm -hmm. if I'm a respectable person, mm -hmm. I'm in the public mm -hmm. and somebody spits on my face and I haven't actually done anything to this person. Right. The first thing that I would do is to really ask me, ask myself a question why that it happened. Why? Right. Why? That's the question that mm -hmm. I'll ask first. But right. then this question would be directed maybe to that person. But I'll then have to ask myself that same question as well to say why. Because my, my why is why did you do that? Mm -hmm. Then my other why would be why did it happen mm -hmm. to me? So those are the two right. things or a reaction that would come from me if that happens to me. Right. Interesting. Thank you so much. So you would want to know why. I would like to know why. So I don't know whether some people have responded. Yeah. I have asked I... this question a few times when I talk about emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. And um, some of the common responses are that this, this man who's pet <laughs> would require a big slap. <laughs> 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 and then wow. my question would be if you slap him what mm. do you think will happen because mm. he was ready for you and you were not ready for him wow have you asked yourself how many are these people mm. how long have they been organizing this Wow. So emotional intelligence is the ability to manage our own emotions and mm -hmm. the emotions of other people. Our own and the, the emotions ability of ability to manage my emotions and the emotions of other people around me. Right. And I think that's that's what makes it a bit more difficult because just managing my emotions is not easy. What about mm. managing other people's emotions? Mm. I'll give you another example. While, yes. while hopefully we are waiting for the audience to respond. Yes. A guy was driving. Mm -hmm. It was peak hour. And he was with his friend. Mm. Then this other driver comes from nowhere. And he's disturbing this guy who has his friend in the car. Mm. And the, the guy who is wrong is also the one who is shouting and blaming the other driver. <laughs> right. So what does the guy who is the, the, the driver who was not wrong? He didn't say anything. He didn't do anything. He continued driving calmly. So as he drove calmly, what happens? What happened was that the other person who was with the, the friend in the car, he asked yes. a question. He said, how come you did not react? How come you did not say anything? Mm. And he said, no, I did, not, I did not have to say anything because people are carrying excess baggage. Some wow. people are carrying loads of rubbish. And I will not allow them to dump their rubbish in my heart. Wow. <laughs> That's powerful. So, yes. So it's not easy because all of us have got an ego. Mm. All of us want to be felt that I'm here. I've arrived. And when somebody does something to us, we want to be quick to act. But sometimes we do it without thinking. Right. Men, there are a few people, I guess, in the world who are yeah. um, intelligent. We call, you know, when you are sharp, we call you intelligent. But rather what we are talking about there is mental intelligence. Then there is spiritual intelligence. 
Then there is emotional intelligence. Right? So mm. you can actually be very intelligent intellectually, but emotionally, you're not good. Wow. And I can tell you, Mr. Netta, and our audience that many years ago, I used to be proud of being short-tempered. I was proud of it. Until wow. one time through personal development and learning and trying to grow, I realized that no, there was nothing special about being short-tempered. Everybody has a temper. It's just that some people know how to control theirs. Mm. Wow. You know, that's, that's a so very, I realized, very powerful... Yeah, I realized I did not have... Yeah, I did not have to be proud of short temper. I had to be ashamed of it and start working on it. Hmm. So remember, when we say emotions, we have positive emotions and we have negative emotions. For now, all the stories that I've given, they are sort of uh, lined towards negative emotions because usually negative emotions are the ones that put us in trouble. True, true. But otherwise, happiness is an emotion. Sadness is an emotion. Bitterness is an emotion. Anger is an emotion. Being highly elated, like you don't know how to control yourself. You make noise because maybe you have won a lottery or something. It could <laughs> annoy other people. You are failing to manage your emotions and the emotions of other people. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, if I may, if I may ask a quick question, mm -hmm. I don't know. Is my video okay on that end? Yes, I can see you very well. Okay, so it's just the glitch on my phone. That's fine. Um, mm -hmm. Emotional intelligence. When we are looking at it mm -hmm. in that perspective that you just described, mm. what do you? How do you sort of? Um, how does it relate? to an environment. Because okay. when you say that, you have to be self-aware right. or you have to be aware of your emotions and the right. emotions of people around you. That mm -hmm. means that there is an environmental factor that's affecting you for you to be able to make certain decisions. Right. How does it, how is it related to an environment that you're in? Excellent. Does it influence? Does it influence the making of your, I mean, the making of decisions? Um, does it have any effect to it at all? Thank you so much for that. So, self awareness is probably the foundation of emotional intelligence. Okay. It's a component of emotional intelligence. Some people, those who love maths, <laughs> they would say it's a subset of emotional intelligence. Okay. So self-awareness, the way I would define it is being able to align my thoughts, my emotions, mm -hmm. and my actions Right. With my inner values. Mm. With what I believe. Aligning my thoughts, my emotions, and my actions to my values. What do I value? So, checking myself regularly <laughs> to say, how, how good am I doing in terms of the way I am thinking, mm -hmm. the way I am showing my emotions, and the way I am acting as I compare that to my values. It does not necessarily have anything to do with other people. Yes, it's important. You know, when we talk of emotional intelligence at large, we are also talking of uh, managing other people's emotions. But when we talk of self-awareness, we are talking of me. Another way of defining self-awareness is just to say, 
knowing and understanding myself. Huh. That's deep. This is deep. I wasn't prepared for this. I wasn't prepared for this. This is, this is so deep. If you, if you try to think about it, if I can jump in there. Yeah, yeah. If you think of um, if you think of uh, a person as an individual, Tanai mm -hmm. as an individual, right. uh, Doctor Mutoko as an individual. Yes. When we are walking around, when we are sitting about, mm -hmm. our actions affect each and every single person around us. Yeah. So basically, when you are when you are uh, 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 emotionally intelligent, you are self-aware of the environment, of, you are self-aware and you're also aware of the environment that you're in. That whatever right. you're doing, whatever the actions you, I mean, whatever your actions, I mean, the actions that you have or the actions that you, you might be putting yourself through could have a detrimental mm -hmm. effect or could have a very positive impact on the people around you and the environment around you. When you're talking of an environment, yes. we're talking of things that surround you. It doesn't really mean that it's supposed to be a person. It can be anything. So yes. your environment, you're supposed to be responsible for the environment if you're emotionally, if you're emotionally intelligent. Someone who is not emotionally intelligent yes. is not responsible for the environment. That also includes other people. Am I right to put it across that way? Yes. Very correct. It's, because um, you see, it's very in, easy to think that. Mm. I just wanted to jump Please in there ahead. with, um, I, was, I was talking to my wife the other day um, when we were driving. Mm. I was saying that, you know, whenever mm. you're driving, you, you're also driving other people's cars. Oh, yes. <laughs> the res your responsibility and self-awareness. You, 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 you are there to sort of control yourself and control other people's cars. You read the indications, whether this person wants to come in front, mm. whether this person is slow, whether this person is fast, and you sort of regulate your speed based on what other people are doing. So basically, you're actually Excellent. driving on behalf of them as well. So that's being, yes. um, you know, emotionally intelligent. Is that one, yes. is that example yes. correct as well? It's a very good example of emotional intelligence. Wow. Actually, you know, talking of driving, you are reminding me of something that once happened. Mm -hmm. uh, in the past, if I was driving in the fast lane and right. somebody is slow, I would either flash them with the lights to, to move over to the slow mm -hmm. lane or mm -hmm. maybe I would because other people do so. So imagine you are in a hurry and maybe you are in a lane of 120 and mm -hmm. somebody is just moving at 60 or at 40. <laughs> so you want to communicate to them to say, no, move this way. So yes. one day it happened very early in the morning and I was rushing somewhere. I was mm -hmm. running. Uh, I was supposed to go and meet some people for, for some business that we were supposed to do. And mm -hmm. I was in full speed, Mr. Neta. Full speed. I will never do that again. Yeah. I was in full speed. I was driving over 100 100, 100 what? Is it kilometers? Yeah. 100 kilometers per <laughs> hour. <laughs> 100, 100, 100, kilometers. 100 kilometers per hour. Over yeah. 100 kilometers per hour. And this man was in front of me and he was slow. So right. I flashed him. You know what he did? Mm. He stepped on the hash brake. In front of me. He missed the signal. I think he was full up with his own issues. So mm -hmm. he thought, okay, you are flashing me. Now we want to see what you are going to do. Now he hit me from the back and we'll see what happens. Wow. Those are emotions. So mm -hmm. it means, I, if following what you were saying as an example of driving, that I'm driving my car, but I'm also driving other people's cars. If That's I am inconsiderate, because mm -hmm. almost everybody you meet, Mr. Neta, is going through something. And that's true. That's very true. So you could trigger things that you don't want to see again. So mm. I could, and I'm grateful that God helped me and I also pressed the harsh break. 
And I prayed. I said, Lord, I'm sorry. I'll never flush anybody again. <laughs> I was taught it the hard way by that man. Imagine I was going to hit him. And when you hit someone from, from the back, mm, you are in serious yeah. trouble. That's automatically you are in serious. Yeah, it's automatically your, 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 your problem. Yeah. Yes. So I, I, I triggered the wrong emotions on mm. that man. And I didn't know what he was going through. And see what I almost put myself into. Wow. And um, it, it actually eases me into, um, into this question as well. You know, whilst, you are, whilst we're having this discussion, I'm having also my thoughts, you know, to say, right. okay, I'm learning. Like I told you that I'm learning about this subject. And I really need to understand. I cannot let right. you go before I really understand <laughs> the subject myself. So um, <laughs> I'm just thinking that, you know, it could have been another different reason why that person had to stop okay it's possible maybe maybe they were dazzled by yeah, the light probably mm -hmm. or maybe they thought that uh maybe there's a it's a warning you're just warning them to slow down this there must be some obstruction in front of them maybe they were just you know obstructed with phones or something like that it could have been anything yes. very so possible. at the end of the day we 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 as human beings i think when we are aware of ourselves, aware of the environment, emotionally right. intelligent, mm -hmm. we're able to react in a certain way just to respond to whatever it is that has that been given to us. Yes. So that then eases me to another question about how do we develop self-awareness as individuals? Because I find it very difficult when other people are doing things that are untoward. You tend to wonder, is this person really okay in the head? That, that makes me feel or think that maybe some people are not self-aware. Is that correct yeah. to say that? Yes, very true. So okay. I'm, glad to see, I'm glad to see on the screen a message from my brother, Bivin Mutoko there. He says, watching from Johannesburg. Welcome, my brother. God yes, bless sweet. you. Thanks, thanks, <laughs> brother Bevan. Thank you. <laughs> yes, so talking about um, self-awareness, Mr. Neta, it doesn't just come. It doesn't mm -hmm. just come. For right. you to be able to know yourself and mm -hmm. understand yourself and understand your emotions, so that you can be able to understand other people's emotions. It doesn't just come. Hmm. So it begins with a quest in the heart to want to know, why am I on this earth? So it begins with self-identity. Who am hmm. I? What am I here on earth to do? Hmm. When I leave this world, what, what am I going to be congratulated for? In my book, 15 Secrets for Personal Financial Success, is the first book that I wrote. In chapter two, there is somewhere where I talk about the importance of the day that I will leave this world. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I want people to say on that day, when I die, I'm not dying, I'm resting. I'm transcending mm -hmm. to a better world. Mm -hmm. And I don't mm -hmm. want anybody to cry tears of regret. I want people to celebrate <laughs> a life well lived, a full life, a man who went all out on a daily basis, 24-7. 24-7 to try and touch lives. Wow. So, once you discover your purpose, you have your self-identity. Then the next thing is you are going to set boundaries for yourself. What are the things that I will never do? And what are the things that I will definitely do? Right. For example, somebody might see some of us married today, happily married, and they think it just happened. No, it didn't just happen. It was planned. We have worked for it and we continue working for it. While yeah. I was a boy, I told myself, 
I think maybe I might, I might be going the wrong direction now. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. No, 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 no. Go ahead, go ahead. We just want to hear stories about your about your childhood. <laughs> yeah, because you see, when when you have discovered who you are and you know what you want to live for, mm -hmm. you are not going to live your life anyhow. You are not going to allow yourself to play with this girl, play with that girl, play with people who don't have any direction. You see, you, you make sure you team up with people who are going somewhere. Wow. Have you ever seen that if you are at the airport and you are surrounded by people that are not going and they dearly love you, some of them will be happy if you miss the plane. <laughs> <laughs> the people that are not going <laughs> yes like that if you tarry too much with people who are not going who don't understand the big picture of what you are trying to do they will be very excited if you fail to go wow so i believe once you know your purpose which is not easy somebody is watching us right now and they are thinking hmm purpose what's my purpose you may not know your purpose exactly but you need to strive, read books, watch videos, watch conversations like the one we are having right now, mm. and change your network. You know, one of the books that really changed my life, it was written by a lady called Sally A. So Sally H. Host. Okay. If I can, you can. That book changed the way I looked at life. I'm a proper village boy. Grew up, you know, in the rural area, heading goats, heading, <laughs> heading cattle, running to school. Sometimes the shoes are torn. You just run. Sometimes we will fall down. It was bad. But it did, it did not cause me to say I'm a good for nothing. I surrounded myself with aunties. And by God's grace, I listened to my parents. I have always believed that everybody needs mentors. Without mentors, you can go far. Because you see, when you have a mentor, you can just look at the way they are living their life. You have a mentor who has never womanized. If you start womanizing, who are you copying? Hmm. So I believe self-awareness is something that you can learn from other people, either through reading their books or through face-to-face -face mentorship, and you also creating time to be quiet and thinking deeply about your life. What do you want to achieve? This, this, this is um, a topic that hits hard. And um, the, reason, the reason why I'm saying it hits hard is the fact that there's a lot of people that are um, out there and they don't really understand who they are. Right? Yes. And um, what you just mentioned there to say, you don't, if, if, if I can, then you can, right? Yes. There's someone who's just putting themselves in front of you to say, my situation was bad than yours, mm -hmm. but I managed to go through it, right? Yes. And it's yes. like a look at me now kind of situation, not yes. because they're being proud, but they're saying mm -hmm. that you know these scraps that you you you're going you're going through now, mm -hmm. they can actually change to something huge. You can yes. actually become. You can become. Yes. If I became, you can also mm -hmm. become. So basically, yes. someone who is giving someone motivational word to say, there's a possibility, or there's a whole world of possibilities out there. But yes. you have to do one thing, and that one thing is to be emotionally intelligent. Be self-aware. Yes understanding yes. who you are and where mm -hmm. you want to go. Because really where you want to go depends on where you're coming from mm -hmm. and what changes are you willing to make. Yes. If I start have making you ever changes, seen, Yeah, go Have on. you ever seen, Mr. Neta, that mm -hmm. if we ask you right now, can you jump a wall that is two meters high? you might say, ah, no, I was not a high jumper at school and all that. But do you know if a lion or a bear or a, a, a vicious dog was chasing you, you will be shocked what you can do. <laughs> wow. You will skip three meters high. Yes. You can 
go over a river, probably that is five meters wide. You just find yourself on the other side. Why? It's because of what is following you. So you and I, we know where we are coming from. Mm. And we also want to rescue other people. Mm. I looked at your story, my brother. Mm. I mean, by the grace of God, I have different people who say, I want to interview, I want to interview. But with the time I have learned that I should not just accept every interview because some people don't even, they, they don't even have self-awareness for themselves. Yeah, let sure. alone when sure. they are interviewing you. You know someone can actually say, I want to interview you, you schedule a day, and they don't show up. It and they will never talk to you. That's, that's being <laughs> it has happened to me. <laughs> it has happened to me. That's not good. So I have learned that, ah, no, when I'm asking to be interviewed next time, I have to assess who is interviewing me because I know who I am, and I need to know who is this person who wants to interview me. So you, you begin to surround yourself with people who are going somewhere, the same way that you are going somewhere. No, you know, I appreciate, I appreciate you. You know, that coming from you is very, very, is very humbling. And, um, you know, what, one, one yeah. other thing, one other thing, Doc, that I would like to, what, that I would like to ask you. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got loads of people that we do interview on this, yes. on this channel. And most of it is just elevating each other. We're just trying right. to build each other, mm -hmm. right? Right. And one of the questions that I mm -hmm. ask people is, mm -hmm. um, would you be willing to mentor people that are struggling, right? Maybe it could be self-awareness, for example. And I know this is what you do, but I'll ask the question anyway. Are you willing to mentor mm -hmm. people that are struggling with their emotions. I am, <laughs> but with conditions, because exactly. I have wasted my life in the past. Yeah. Yes. I've wasted my life in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, for me, mm -hmm. if somebody says they want to be mentored by me, not that there's something special about me, but the little that I know or the little I've experienced, Whoever says they want to be mentored, they have to go through tests. Mm. Very simple tests. Because you see, it's easy for someone to say, this person is my mentor. This person is... There are people who go around, Dr. Mtoko is my mentor. Mm. They have never read my book. When I post on social media, they never comment. They, they never have comment. never had a face-to-face -face with me. Yeah, They are not doing anything with me. They are just... They are trying to help themselves to move faster by lying to people that they are being mentored by Dr. Mto. It's simple things that mm. cause somebody to be accepted, whether to be mentored. And if you ask, I mean, yourself, Mr. Neta, I'm sure you have seen it. It's painful mm -hmm. to try and give time to people and people take you for granted. I'll give you a simple example. Mm. So one time somebody really bothered me and I gave them a chance. And we said, okay, let's meet at Grand Power Motel in Haberon, mm -hmm. right? I, so for me, time is everything. Time is life. Yeah. If we agree that we are meeting at 1 p.m., by quarter to one, I'm already there. Because I know where I'm going with my life and I'm not going to drag your life. So if you want to be mentored by me or you want to be my friend or you want to do business with me, then you got to be serious. Be so serious, yeah. I, I get to the place, Mr. Neta, you can't believe it. I get to the place 15 minutes early. 30 minutes later, the person is not there. Wow. What did I do? I left. An hour later, this guy is calling. <laughs> oh, uh, hey, Dr. Mtogo, I've just arrived now. Hey, you know what, what happens with such people. It's over and it's over. No explanation. Because at least you could have sent a message. Because I even sent the messages when I was waiting. How far are you? No, I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. So who has time for such a person? I'm not saying they are a bad person. I'm sure somebody else can mentor them and they will do well together. I like that. I like that. It's, this, is, this is self actualization. Right? Yeah. Self-awareness. You know exactly yes. who you are. You know yes. what, you want, what you want to surround yourself with. Um, yes. And you don't want anyone to waste your time. And this is critical. No. 
Now yeah. that makes me that makes me want to get to another question, which is we've spoken about emotional intelligence. You've spoken about self-awareness. How does this tie onto, onto business? We're talking of entrepreneurs um, or people that are hoping to become an entrepreneur. They 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 they're self-aware. They know that they right. want to be entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. But then how does emotional intelligence tie into, into that? Perfect. Thank you so much for that. So emotional intelligence is a very broad subject because you are talking of self-awareness, you are talking of empathy, you are talking of social skills. There's quite a bit we are talking about there when we talk of emotional intelligence. It also touches on self-esteem. Right. So what I would say to entrepreneurs is, as if you cannot work on your emotional intelligence, mm -hmm. if you don't grow emotionally, then you know business is not easy. No. Statistics tell us that nine out of 10 businesses fail. Mm. Some will say in the first one year, some will say in the, in the first five years, whatever years they talk about. But we can see that the statistics are not positive. So that alone, by yourself, before you hire anyone, just to be in business and how stressful it can be. <laughs> wow. you, you could easily develop depression and high blood pressure <laughs> and all kinds of things because you are just trying to grow the business. We are not talking of your employees here. Mm. And many people, I've had people who say, I want to start my own business so that I can be my own boss, so that I can work the time that I want. Oh, really? Yeah. You need to, I mean, you and I are entrepreneurs. Yeah. Last night I slept four hours. I haven't yet gotten time to doze throughout the day. It's not healthy for me. I'm an entrepreneur, but I have to work. Yes. I must work. We must work. We must so, work. It means if you are going to make it as an entrepreneur, you cannot afford to say, I want to just work any time that I want. If employees work eight hours a day, for you as an entrepreneur, you must work 18 hours a day mm. or 16. If you are a bit less, 16. It's <laughs> twice as much. <laughs> Otherwise, nothing is going to work. So... Emotional intelligence is important because remember, you deal with suppliers. You deal with, you are saying you don't want to work with uh, a boss. Your new boss is called custom. And customers come in different packages. And that's the most difficult boss. <laughs> the most custom. difficult boss. Yeah. Yeah. So emotional intelligence is very key. And if you are going to be successful as an entrepreneur, it means you must build a team. If you don't build a team, you're a small businessman. You are not an entrepreneur. You need to be able to build a team. How do you build a team? You need emotional intelligence. You need to manage your emotions, whether positive or negative emotions, and then manage your team's uh, or, or emotions as well. Then you manage your supplier's emotions. You manage your, your customer's emotions. Like they always say, customer is always right. It's mm -hmm. easier said than done, Mr. Neta. You know some customers are just completely impossible. But <laughs> you have to. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, you, you just have to do it. You just have to do it. You know, yeah. you know, you know yeah. what you just said there, um, doctor. Mm. I think um, mm. I, I appreciate that a lot. And right. the reason why I appreciate that a lot is because I think I'm, um, I'm also a culprit. When it comes to, you know, building teams or, you know, um, 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 just some of the things that do happen with customers and with people around you, especially when you're trying to build a business. Mm -hmm. There's a flare mm -hmm. of emotions in most cases. And sometimes you, yes. feel, of, you feel like giving up. Um, giving right. up is an emotion, right? Yeah. That yeah. could have been yeah. triggered by something. It could have been yeah. maybe one employee. Could, I mean, it could, be, mm. it could be anything. It could be even a customer, yes. you know? Yes. Or or one yes. of your, your 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 long leads just decided to bail on you. And you, yes. you, you just feel like, you know, I can't do this anymore. 
Right. When it comes to that, especially if you're mm -hmm. an entrepreneur, I've, mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of, uh, you know, motivational um, sort of, uh, you know, quotes saying that, you know, don't give up, mm -hmm. right? With a bit of uh, sugar on them. But I just wanted to, I just wanted to understand, really mm. don't give up. Mm. What does that mean? What does don't give up really mean when it comes to your emotional, your emotions? Right. Am I allowed to be emotional? Or am I not yes, allowed definitely. to be emotional? Can, yes, am I allowed to, to go ahead, go ahead and you, answer this. You, we are all humans, Mr. Neta. And it's okay to be emotional, but we must be calculative. Mm -hmm. We must calculate. After I take this step, what's next? So when yeah. I do executive coaching with directors and CEOs, and sometimes I'm invited to do conflict resolutions in, in firms, one of the things I've seen is that CEOs, they are just human beings. And being a CEO, especially of a medium or large enterprise, can be very difficult because you end up being alone. It's a lonely journey. Mm. So you, you realize that people want to please you. When they see you, they pretend like they love you. They care about you. When you pass by, they start talking about, uh, about you. They talk bad things about you. They beg bite you. And you are alone. And one of the things that CEOs do is that they make decisions without thinking sometimes. Mm. Let me give you a simple example that I've seen that happens. So, Mr. Neta, you are a CEO, you're running your company, mm -hmm. and one of your employees does something that really angers you, and you fire them on the spot. This is right. my company. Who do you think you are? Out of my company. Maybe HR department will try to talk to you. You say, hey, be careful also. You can follow. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, legally speaking, we know what that does. If you fire someone without verbal warnings and written warnings, what's going to happen to you? They will take you to labor. You. Yeah. They will sue, sue you. you. Yeah. So we see government departments paying millions every year. Mm -hmm. We see large enterprises led by smart CEOs paying millions because there was a lack of emotional intelligence in one or two decisions. Wow. So it's important to, for us to take time and, and realize that, yes, you might be a director, you might be a manager, you might be a good employee, you might be the CEO, you might be an independent entrepreneur because you are quite sharp. That's good. But try to be sharp emotionally as well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what, Doc? You know what, Doc? Um, I would have loved for us to spend even two hours, three hours discussing emotional intelligence. Right. And I know that, you know, a lot of people that are that are on the year's audience, they've actually learned a thing or two. I just feel sorry for people that did not manage to join us because this is very important. It's a very, very important subject that every single person who wants to be an entrepreneur or just, you know, just, just for you to live on a daily basis, we must be aware of a thing called emotional intelligence, how it affects yes. us, how it affects people around us and how it actually affects the environment in which we live in. Yes. Yes. So thank you so much for, for coming through. Now, I would like to ask you, I think, Two more questions before before you leave. You you told us that you've got a book that's coming, um, and you've got you've got some books that you've written. Um, can you please tell us the titles of these books and where can we find them if we want to buy them, please? Okay, so thank you for that. So the first one is called "15 Secrets for Personal Financial Success," mm -hmm. and the second one is called "16 Mistakes." Singles Make, Volume 1. Okay. And the third one is called What You Have Is Enough. Right. It's more of a business finance book that helps startups. But I was surprised that even multimillionaires have a lot of testimonies after reading that book, What You Have Is Enough. And you then the fourth one is called Financial Freedom. 
Okay. And the fifth one that should come out next month by the 15th of June, it should be out because I'm, I'm speaking um, at a Pan-African Speakers Convention. And I want to ensure that by the time I speak there, uh, the book will already be out. So that okay. book is called Emotional Intelligence and Team Alignment. Wow. Right. Yes. I'm mostly interested in every single book. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. I thought and you were I'm going like... to say I'm mostly interested <laughs> in this particular book. No, no, no. In every single one of them. Where can we right. find them? Where can we buy them? Okay. At the moment, we have them in bookshops in Botswana, okay. but we have been shipping across the world. And we are working towards putting them on Amazon. I think when we put on them on Amazon, it will be easier. But for now, if somebody really wants them, we can ship them wherever they are in the world. Fantastic. So this this also brings me to we've got um we, we are launching we're launching a new e-commerce uh, website uh, very shortly. I think it will be in August. So we're launching it end of August. Right. And um, we one of our main concentration areas is to make sure that all the authors on the African continent are able to sell their books on that platform. That's so excellent. we are creating that because most, in most cases, I, I realize that we've got lots of people that write books. They take their first batch of orders, they put them in the house, and they're not sold. Right because maybe their network is quite small and it's very right. difficult for them to distribute them. But once, right. we, once we have that launched, we'll have each and every, we need to have every single author on the African continent. We need to have all those books on that platform. So we might need to stock your books as well. No, congratulations to you. You <laughs> congratulate us once, once we finish and once we launch this website. No, yeah, you, know? you see, we, yes. we must celebrate the journey. When you are traveling, you don't celebrate when you arrive. You must enjoy the whole journey. <laughs> that's the reason. That's the reason why I stop at McDonald's at each and every single. Uh, <laughs> every single turn, I'm stopping at McDonald's. So no, thank, thank you so much. Um, what I'll do is um, once if we finish this, I'll then have to put your details where we, where they can find the books on Facebook. Right. Maybe you can share it as well on your on your platform as well so that people might know where to get these books because we need we need to sell them people need the knowledge and you've you you've got the knowledge that i need to grow and i hope that everybody else who is listening as well would actually attest to this now having said that um you also do coaching you also do coaching um can you maybe elaborate on that before we leave so that maybe somebody on here might be interested in wanting to to attend one of your trainings. Thank you very much, Mr. Neta, for that. So I do mainly executive coaching, <laughs> whereby I work with CEOs, I work with directors. In some, in a few cases, I work with some people who want to be promoted in their workplace. They want to grow. <laughs> so what I do is I help leaders to develop particularly their presentation skills, and in some cases to develop their emotional intelligence. It just depends. But most of it is for executive coaching. But once in a while, I also have people who just want general business coaching, and some come for financial wellness coaching. But most of what we do at Success Training Africa is that we are strategists. Mm -hmm. We help companies, we help them to do market surveys, to do business surveys, uh, things like environmental scans. Then after that, we help them to craft their strategy or to review their strategy or to refresh their strategy. That's most of what we do on the strategy area. Um, but in some cases, it actually begins as coaching. Then it goes into consulting. Sir, thank you so much, Doc. I do appreciate you. Um, and thank you, everybody for attending this and I'm sure it could be maybe a week or two before I have you back here.
we need we need we need we need you back we need you back we've got a lot of things that we might need to discuss um we've got loads of topics that are that are hot right now when it comes right. to business when it comes to you know self awareness and so on and so forth so right. i will invite you at some point um if you don't mind for you to come and then we can have a discussion around those uh those topic areas i've got i've got right. them i just don't want to you know to say them now but there's loads <laughs> of them which i know that you know you are suitable you are the right man okay. to come and discuss okay. this so thank you so much and thank you so much to our audience we appreciate you that was dr wilbert mutoko go and check out his page and also go and check um success strategist africa is it that's um success that's training the, africa success training africa and just uh send yes. him an email if you want the email is just at the banner below his phone number is there as well go on his page send him a message do whatever to get reach of this man because i think he's got the wisdom that will take you places if you really listen to his words so i thank you doctor have a very good night and thank you for coming thank you mr neta and thank you for all our, all our audience for taking time out god bless you thank you have a good night bye bye everybody okay same to you bye bye bye, -bye.